All right, kids, last week, Kobe Bryant's statue was unveiled and placed outside of Crypto.com Arena slash Staples, where he once played for the Los Angeles Lakers. According to Vanessa Bryant, his widow, the pose was chosen by Kobe before his untimely death. It depicts him walking off the court in 2005, the night he scored 62 points in three quarters against the Dallas Mavericks, sporting that number eight like he did in the first half of his career. Apparently, he has two more statues on the way. If anyone deserves three, it's him. And I would imagine that one of the other two statues will feature Kobe wearing number 24 like he did in the second half of his career. Now, Kobe Bryant has to be one of the only athletes in the world, regardless of sport, to have two different numbers retired by one team. And he was such a great dynamic basketball player that there's a legit argument as to which version of Kobe was better, eight or 24. For that reason, among basketball players, Kobe is in a league of his own. You'll have a harder time comparing Kobe to himself than to others, but when Mamba is pitted against one player in particular, I question some people's mentality. He's so disrespectful when it comes to being, bro. They talking about he ain't better than MJ. Well, he can't be top five. He's not better than MJ. What? He's the closest thing to MJ. Well, tell me the other motherfucker that's close to MJ then that played the game. Who else is close to MJ? Ain't nobody else close to MJ. So how is he excluded out of this conversation if he's close to MJ? And MJ is the greatest of all time. Help me understand that. Bro, that man is top five. You ask anybody that has played against Michael Jordan and played against Kobe Bean Bryant in that era, it would tell you Bean is top five. That was Tracy McGrady, Hall of Fame basketball player and all-time two guard in his own right, explaining why Kobe should at least be considered top five. And even though he played against Bean, he isn't necessarily reaching for Kobe to be top three or making a Kobe GOAT argument, nor should he. The question is, how close is Kobe Bryant to the person largely considered the GOAT, Michael Jordan? Or is Kobe close to MJ? That's what we're going to talk about today. And to find our answer, we're going to have to look through stats, peek at style, and cover skill. And before I continue, Tracy said earlier in that clip I just showed that we shouldn't hold it against Bean for winning three championships while playing with Shaquille O'Neal. He would go on to say, we don't keep that same energy for Magic Johnson and the rings he won with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. And McGrady is right. You see all over NBA history how the vast majority of players have both been the big dog and the sidekick in their careers. I mean, Jordan isn't one of those players, but still. Because unless your name is Hakeem Olajuwon or Dirk Nowitzki, you don't win an NBA championship without another all-time great performance or all-time great player in their prime. Both Dream and Dirk only did that once. So Kareem and Magic, along with Shaq and Kobe, having teammates in the all-time top 10 shouldn't diminish their greatness. And yes, that was me admitting that Kareem, Magic, Shaq, and Kobe are pretty much top 10 players all time. I'll get back to the rest of my top 10 later. With that said, I think we can all agree on three things when it comes to MJ versus Kobe. One, MJ and Kobe are the two greatest shooting guards of all time. Two, they're the two most influential players of all time. Just look at how many players today have eight or 24 on their uniforms. Meanwhile, LeBron, many people's GOAT, used to wear 23 because of MJ, and Kobe wore 24 to get one more than Jordan. Which brings us to three. MJ and Kobe are two of the most similar basketball players of all time, although Jordan's game was more attack the basket and get to the paint, while Kobe's was more facing up, foul line extended, but their post-up, mid-range, fadeaway moves are a lot alike. Kobe clearly got his game from Mike. Other than Kobe Bryant because he steals all my moves. Every Hooper over the age of 36 has tried to be like Mike. Kobe just does the best Jordan impersonation. So even among two guards, it's Jordan tier one, Kobe tier two, then everybody else. See, Michael Jordan has more rings, of course, and Kobe has more trips to the finals. Jordan averages more points, rebounds, and assists per game than Kobe Bryant. Not only that, Jordan has more regular season MVPs, more finals MVPs, and Jordan has a defensive player of the year. Kobe doesn't. Jordan has 10 scoring titles. Kobe has two. Jordan has a higher shooting percentage from the field, barely worse percentages from the free throw line in three, and I recognize that Jordan benefited from a shorter three-point line for a few seasons. While we're at it, the Kobe having one MVP thing. Look, voting for these awards is an imperfect process which seems to change every season where one year the criteria seems to be the most outstanding player is the MVP, and the next year it's the best player on the best team. Got it, maybe. But when someone says, oh, well, 
Kobe was robbed of a couple of MVPs while conveniently showing his numbers versus the actual award winner for any given season without showing how their teams performed, by the way, for the sake of context. I hope they know that Jordan finished second in MVP voting three times and third twice during his career. If anyone was robbed of MVPs, it was MJ. Just look at MJ's stats from his rookie year and Kobe's MVP stats. You know, Tracy McGrady said in another video that Kobe took MJ's skill set and enhanced it. He added that Kobe was a better ball handler and jump shooter from the perimeter than Mike. And I can see that, but that's it. Is that it? There's so much more to basketball. For instance, defense, a whole other side of the ball, which takes skill. In addition to some of the basic stats that I displayed earlier, Jordan also averages more blocks and steals per game than Kobe. Getting blocks and steals takes skill. Jordan led the league in steals more times than Kobe led the league in anything. And sure, Kobe could play D, especially on the ball. He wasn't named first team all defense nine times for nothing, but Bean clearly stealing MJ's game and his fans pretending like he perfected it while doing less with it on both sides of the ball is glaring. Looking at another all-time great shooting guard, Kobe averages less rebounds, assists, steals, and blocks than the underrated Clyde Drexler. There are levels to this, but because we love Kobe so much, we create a revisionist history. Kobe is not the chucker. Michael is the chucker. <laughs> Kobe shots go in. Michael kept shooting until they went in. <laughs> Kobe's shot went in. Michael would keep shooting until it went in. When we check Kobe's shooting splits from the 2006 season where he averaged a career high 35.4 points per game, leading the league, and his shooting splits from his MVP season, 2008, and compare those to MJ's 1997 season, the first season where this kind of data became available, I think, you'll see that MJ kind of shoots better from mid-range and is close from long distance. So, Where's John Sally getting that take from? Either way, Kobe is the greatest difficult jump shot taker and maker of all time. Yet, and this is kind of the theme of the whole video, just because he's more likely to make them than anyone else, doesn't mean he's likely to make them. Kobe set the record for the most missed shots in NBA history. And if Bean had a hole in his game, it would be how inefficient he was. I remember back in 2019 reading this column from ESPN by Rick Riley as he rode with Kobe on a game day, riding shotgun in Bean's Lamborghini, having a certain kind of ice transfer via police transport, and Kobe stopping at a fitness facility to get a workout in where he just left his Lambo out in front, not in a parking spot. The Lakers beat the Clippers that night 88 to 85, with Bryant scoring 18 points on 5 for 15 shooting. In the 2009 documentary, Kobe Doing Work, a Spike Lee joint, Bryant shot 6 of 14 from the field, scored 20 points, and played 32 minutes against San Antonio in a regular season game. Not a big deal. Every wing player has games like that. Kobe had a lot of them. I'm not going to call Kobe a gun. He was an underrated passer who didn't trust his teammates in portions of his career for one reason or another. But without going into detail about player efficiency ratings, that is, a measure of per minute production standardized such that the league average is 15, Kobe is way down the all-time list at 29. Not the best measure, but it's something. Even with that, if I were to continue to add analytics to the Jordan versus Kobe debate, Bean turns the ball over more while having a smaller usage rate. The point is, stats tell us something that the eyeball test doesn't. It's not like we've watched every one of MJ's or Kobe's games, but the numbers have. So if a Kobe is the GOAT because he's the most skilled type person made their argument, I would tell them that Dream was more skilled than Shaq, but Diesel is a better player. If skill sold, truth be told, Kyrie would probably be top five all time, and Bo Bo would be top 20 right now. Neither of those things are true. With all that they're capable of with the ball in their hands, what are they getting out of their game? If one's greatness was solely about skill, Shouldn't that earn you better stats and more individual accomplishments, team success, accolades, and awards? See, the previous five minutes of this video. Kevin Durant asked why he couldn't be in the GOAT conversation. Quote, because I went to the Warriors, Durant told the Arizona Republic in a recent interview, why shouldn't I be in that? That's the question you should ask. Why not? What haven't I done? First of all, he went to a team in Golden State that he came close to beating but couldn't be. Became their best player, yeah. The Warriors needed him for those two championship runs, but they won before Kev and after he left. Durant, who would be top three most skilled 
all time hasn't gotten out of his skill what others have with far less ability and style. Durant always reminds me, we need to step up our adjective game. How we describe players and their skills matter. Saying Kevin Durant is the greatest scorer of all time comes up short. He might be the most complete, most versatile, very efficient, yeah, but it's like the Kobe is so polished, look at his footwork and fluency with the way he handles the ball, creates space, reverse pivot into a fadeaway jumper over his right shoulder. Ugh. And that, I guess, is how the skill thing goes after Bean gets that bucket once the ball goes through the hoop. But uh, aren't Kobe fans curious about not only how someone created their own shot and shots for others, but who got the most buckets and who did so efficiently for that matter? And if those buckets led to more winning and more awards and accolades and team success and everything we've described so far. Kobe could score, don't get me wrong, he's fourth on the all-time scoring list above Mike, but what's the difference? If Tim Duncan catches the ball on the low block and baby hooks it off the backboard, different skill set, but two points is two points. To be clear, stats are not the end-all be-all, but neither is skill. But again, if you pair those two things with all the stuff, then that's where the all-time greats reside. Yeah, Kobe lives in the same neighborhood all time as MJ, but he doesn't live next door to him. Yes, Kobe is the closest thing to MJ in terms of skill and style, but no, he's not close to Jordan when it comes to stats and most other things. And there's more than one way to be great. For the record, I have, subject to change, MJ, Bron, Kareem, Russell, Magic, Wilt, Bird, Duncan, Kobe, and Steph recently replaced Shaq in my top 10. If this were Mount Rushmore style, it would be MJ as the GOAT, Bron as the most physically gifted human of all time, Bill Russell as the greatest winner, while Magic and Bird would share a face for bringing the sport back from extinction. I've heard Kobe jokingly but not really say that he's better than Mike and LeBron, but even if he were still with us, he wouldn't claim to be the GOAT. Jordan doesn't either. James, on the other hand, it's weird. I think everybody everywhere should compare themselves to Kobe Bryant. No matter what we do, Bean played basketball the way anybody should do anything. Take God-given talent, master that craft, and work or play to win. Mamba mentality is above and beyond stats and skill. It's a lifestyle. Not many are cut from this same mold. we gonna be all right. If you're interested to see how close Kobe actually was to MJ as far as friendship, partnership, apprenticeship, mentorship, then I'm going to include some links in the description below of interviews where they talk about one another. 